Hey what's up guys welcome to another exciting design tutorial with UX Mate Today we are going to learn how to create a cool loading animation in Figma So yes let's jump into the tutorial and get started with it Well before it make sure you are already subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon next to it because if you are not doing it you are going to miss a lot of exciting design content So yes let's jump into the Figma and get started with it this loading animation is kind of, you know, a little bit complex to replicate, but when you follow each and every step as expressed in the tutorial, you will be able to achieve the same results, right? So make sure you follow each and every steps in the video. So uh, what we'd be doing first, we'd create the animation, right? And then we will uh, apply the effects to make it, you know, more cool and exciting, right? So let's start with uh, creating an ellipse. Let's draw an ellipse, okay? And what we'll be doing, uh, I'm not sure if you have already, you know, watched the custom pivot, uh, you know, how to create a custom pivot in Figma. Uh, if not, then, you know, uh, be sure to check out the video. Uh, I'll be covering that, but yeah, you can, you know, uh, watch that video to get more insights about animation in Figma and, you know, uh, the different techniques uh, of animation in Figma, right? Apart from that, uh, also, you know, we have created a video on liquid uh, effect in After Effects. So, you know, we are going to use the same technique here as well. I had mentioned in that video uh, that, you know, same technique can be used in any other design tool. So, we'd be doing, you know, same kind of things in this tutorial as well. But it would be slightly different because we'd be creating a loading animation inside Figma, right? So, let's start with creating an ellipse, okay? Let's just duplicate this and, you know... Uh, Select both of them and hit Shift A, which will, you know, uh, create an all layout uh, of the selection. Let's duplicate this one more time. So now we have three ellipses, right? What I'll be doing, I'll be, you know, uh, making the center ellipse a little bit smaller because this is going to be our pivot point, right? And I'll uh, this like make this auto layout as a center align. So, you know, when we uh, rotate our things, you know, our circles would be rotating around the center pivot point let's you know uh, change the colors as well let's make this one as black for now definitely we'd be changing the colors later but as of now let's you know uh, have two different colors so we can you know identify which ellipse we are you know working on with or you know at least the direction of the rotation i'll adjust the uh, distance between the auto layout so somewhere around 20 you know uh, you can even play around with this uh, to get the look you know the desired look which you want but let's start with the 20 and then we can uh, modify this further right i'll duplicate this entire auto layout frame okay and i'll call it left section and this would be right section now let's you know uh, move this uh, maybe you know you need to use the arrow keys and make sure you align it perfectly on the uh, red circles right now what we have to do we have to select both of the sections right and left sections and then we'll create a frame you know uh, we'll be using frame selection here so it will create a global frame for our selection we will rename this as effects because you know all the effects which would be uh, applying would be applied on this frame so whatever content we have within the frames uh, within you know this effects frame uh, that will you know be catering to the effects which we have applied here right now let's first create a quick animation of this uh, what I'll be doing I'll be creating a component I'll just move this outside the frame let me change the background color slightly so you know we can work with the black color or or you know, uh, I'll, I'll just change the black color instead i'll make it white for now and then these i'd be you know probably i would just hide them rather than you know changing the colors those are you know uh, we are you know done with the core fundamental or the principle of you know rotating around the center pivot now let's uh, select the entire effects frame okay and then create a component out of it 
and i'll give it a good name loading animation right so this would be our component and we'd be doing the uh, animation within the component and then we'll bring this component to our frame first we need to create the variants for this so we'll create a properties variant okay we'll create first uh, one variant as of now and then we'll create one more variant uh, or let's you know first call it frame 2 and this would be our frame 1 and we'll say you know instead of properties we'll say frames because we are doing animation and animation is based on the keyframes or the frames that's why you know i try to follow uh, this naming uh, convention where you know we have property called frames and then we have uh, variants like frame 1 frame 2 frame 3 you know whatever keyframes we need to create right go to the prototype tab and you know create a after delay with you know somewhere around 50 as of now we can definitely adjust this later and i'll keep the timing curve easy and ease out back which creates you know a springy kind of effect and would be uh, changing this to frame 2 right now let's select the frame 2 uh, select the left section and rotate this somewhere around 180 degrees right so make sure you are doing it 180 degrees in the frame 2 for the left section we will be you know creating one more variant here which is our frame 3 right and in frame 3 we will be selecting the right section and this time we would be rotating this to a negative number negative 180 uh, uh, figma doesn't allow negative 180 so what i generally do is you know negative 179 kind of thing uh, works right or 179.9 which is you know almost 180 degrees uh, or you know uh, a point 1 degree less than 180 but it basically you know uh, allows us to create a negative rotation so you know now again i will be creating the after delay interaction between frame 2 and frame 3 this would be after delay again would be having you know 50 somewhere around same like smart animate ease in and ease out backs animation curve and somewhere around 800 milliseconds and now we'll create a looping animation so from the third frame to it we go back to the first frame again with the after delay interaction this time we'll be just doing it one on you know uh, and this would be linear and would be having one here as well because we don't want uh, a glitch you know from frame 2 to frame 1 we just want to a quick you know a snappy animation from frame 3 to frame 1 now let's you know uh, bring this component to our oops sorry let's bring this component to our master frame uh, i guess i need to change the colors now everywhere i'll select the entire component and i'll make this little gray okay now let's you know test this if our animation is working as intended okay great now our animation is working as we want now we need to adjust it you know uh, the adjust the further effects on this so first we'd be you know applying a layer blur effect again you know we need to apply it uh, to the you, you can do it you know to the component or you can do it the individual frames within the component let's try you know applying it to the entire component layer blur, layer blur with somewhere around 40 and let's again test this if you know this applied the layer blur filters to all of the variants or not okay yes great it is you know working as expected it has applied layer blur to you know all the frames still there is you know uh, some glitch which you might be seeing you know but uh, don't worry would we'll be changing the colors so we'll not see that glitch anymore okay uh next thing is you know uh, the fixing you know the blur effect but before that let's you know make sure we make all the uh, all the you know um, what we say ellipses as a same color so let's you know uh, let's go to the hex and swim around this and you know the copy you know copy this x value and you know apply it to all the ellipses you know all the colors within the component okay 
uh, and this color we don't need to change because this is you know the outer frame but we can, if you want you know we can keep it uh, white or anything uh, just to make sure it is you know visible on your background now if we test this again we will not see that uh, you know a glitch because now all of the colors are same so uh, it doesn't you know create that uh, a glitchy kind of effect now let's you know uh, fix the blur or you know the apply the core effects which we want to apply uh, what i'd be doing rather than you know uh, applying the effects on uh, components what we did we have applied it to the global instance of the component you can do it you know uh, in the component as well uh, which will you know uh, be bit easier because you don't have to you know uh, do it in every instance so uh, let's you know undo this uh, we'll remove this layer blur effect from this component and we will add it to each and every variant within the component right layer blur and the value would be somewhere around 40 great now uh and we need to yes i need to bring it again now we have you know the blur effect applied to the component not to the you know instance of the component great so the next thing is you know to fix this uh, blurry kind of thing and you know make this a cool uh, cool looking animation so what we'll be doing we'll be selecting our you know uh, main test frame and we'll be drawing two rectangles first i'll draw one rectangle i'll give it a name gray okay and then uh, we'll change its color to a perfect gray to do that you know what we can do is you can go to the rgb and as you know we have two uh, 255 uh, values in the rgb we can create an exact half of it uh, somewhere around you know 128 bits i hope you guys are aware you know how rgb works so you know these uh, three values are for red green and blue and you know uh, it defines you know from 0 to 255 bits like uh, which you know uh, tone like uh, which value of red which value of green and which value of blue you want so let's say if you want a pure you know blue color what you can do is you can you know make first two as zero and then third one as 255 in that case you know you will get a perfect blue color so you know you can use the rgb values if you want a perfect red you can do you know 255 in the red and you can do zero on the last frame right if you do all zeros you know it will create a dark black color if you do all 255 it will create a white color right because the combination of the colors you know is in red green and blue and those are the different values for individual colors reds greens and blues right so as we want a perfect gray it, it is you know between a uh, hundred percent black and a hundred percent gray so we need you know half of uh, you know uh, the black which is 128 so now we have perfect gray you know uh, and what we'll be doing we'll be changing its uh, blending mode you know we'll be doing color dodge right now i'll duplicate this and i'll call it black okay and i'll change its color to the black uh, we don't need to add any values we can simply drag the color slider here yeah so and uh, now this time we'll make it color burn so now you can see you know our uh, dots are now kind of you know uh, looking with a sharp edge right now let's test this prototype again i'm not sure if you're able to see this let me just scale it a little bit up now you can see you know that cool liquidy kind of effect is there so now make this animation you know more uh, uh, more crispy or you know more appealing uh, Animation looks good, but you know, I would still uh, want to adjust the size and you know, the distance between the uh, the dots, right? So what we'll be doing, let's just close this preview for now. So to adjust the, you know, uh, distance, what we can do is, you know, we can go ahead and select individual right sections and left sections and adjust the uh, spacing between the auto layout. But to do this manually, you know, it will take a lot of time. So what we'll be doing, we'll be selecting uh, all the, you know, uh, frames or you know the variance frame 1 frame 2 frame 3 from the component hit enter or return you know which will select all the right sections and left sections within the frames right so uh, you know now you can adjust the auto layout 
so i'll say you know somewhere around 5 pixels maybe yes and uh, i guess i need to again you know let me you know just log these two uh, gray and black rectangles which will allow us to select the component easily now what we have to do is let's just trace this if it is you no know, uh, if it is looking as expected it won't be because you know we have the uh, the space between the the, the center you know parts so we have to align that correctly so what we have to do we have to select you know all the uh, right sections but first let me you know select the frames and then uh, just you know hide the blur effect because you know it will allow us to see you know the distance or you know the gap between the components right now select the right sections in uh, all of the comp uh, all of the variants and just move them using your arrow keys make sure you know you align them perfectly in the center if you want to you know uh, to achieve a different kind of look you can have it a little bit you know uh spread it apart kind of thing let's let's you know uh, see how this looks it completely depends upon the look which you want to uh, you know uh, derive from this now you can see you know uh, how this is looking as we have removed the blur effect it is not you know giving that liquidy kind of effect or you can you know uh, set them a little bit apart as well if you want uh let's you know just test that out how this looks okay let me select the right sections and move them a little bo little bit more you know further uh from them and again i'll select the frames and i'll again uh enable the blur effect okay now test this I feel you know we should be uh, enlarging the ellipses because uh, as we have applied the blur uh, effect you know the ellipses are kind of you know shrunk so either you know what we can do is we can uh, adjust the blur let me just scale it down we can either you know adjust the blurriness here and uh, we can see you know how it looks around 20 but i still feel you know the 40 as you know the blurriness looks much better so i'll go back to the 40 and i'll instead you know uh, enlarge the ellipses so what we can do is we can again select all of them hit enter or you know return again hit enter it will select all the ellipses within the uh, you know uh, within the component and now what you can do is you can change the width and height here or i'll just you know add auto layout to the component okay and uh, let's you know just try to adjust the right sections a little more you know further uh, to the center oops i guess i messed it <laughs> yes uh this looks much better right so i hope guys you have enjoyed this video uh make sure you know you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon next to it and don't forget to like comment and you know share this video in your network it will help us to you know gain the confidence and i'll keep creating the videos till then you know keep watching keep liking keep designing 